Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of the Mass. I invite you to stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oops. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lovely to see you this morning, everybody, and uh, I hope you're well rested and uh, ready for the day, ready to embrace the day and the blessings that God uh, will send us uh, this day, and especially the blessing of mercy which is really the theme of the readings for today. Um, and that, that mercy that flows through God to us and through us to one another. Uh, a mercy that can transform the face of the world. A world that as we know today is full of strife and division. So never before, well I suppose there's always a great need for mercy in the world. But today especially we see it, and uh, so today's readings are an incentive for us to embrace the path of forgiveness and mercy. Not only are we talking about mercy today, but we're also talking about money today. M&M &M Sunday, you could call it, and uh, Bill St. John will be giving us uh, his annual financial report uh, just at the end of Mass there today. So let us uh, acknowledge our need for God's mercy as we begin this Eucharist, calling to mind our sins, asking God to be merciful to us. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated now for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Samuel. Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. David and Ubishai went into Saul's army by night. There Saul lay sleeping within the encampment with his spear stuck in the ground at his head and Abner and the army lay around him. Ubishai said to David, God has given your enemy into your hand today. Now therefore, let me pin him to the ground with one stroke of the spear. I will not strike him twice. But David said to Ubishai, do not destroy him. For who can raise his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? So David took the spear that was at Saul's head and the water jar, and they went away. No one saw it or knew it, 
nor did anyone awake, for they, they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill far away with a great distance between them. David called aloud to Saul, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord rewards everyone for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, but I would not raise my hand against the Lord's anointed. As your life was precious today in my sight, so may my, may my life be precious in the sight of the Lord, and may he rescue me from all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You will do many things and will succeed in them. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, the Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord is merciful and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. The Lord is merciful and gracious. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has comp compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. The Lord is merciful and gracious. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. It is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, made of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the one of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And it is the one of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the one of dust, we will also bear the image of the one of heaven. The word of the Lord. The Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, Offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, 
and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. So folks, uh, last weekend at the 5 o'clock Mass, I, I told a little story about the Civil War. And if you were at that Mass, you might have uh, heard the story. I don't think I used it on the Sunday, though, the next day. But uh, it bears repeating in light of today's readings. And in light of what's going on in our world, uh, as I was saying, you know, we, we live in a world of division and tension and anger and... Uh, um, we're having a little, a little difficulty listening to each other, trying to understand people's different perspectives. And, and um, so this uh, story, apparently it's a true, well, it is <clears throat> a true story. Um, and it's based on uh, the uh, Civil War series that was done by the um, documentary producer Ken Burns. Um, and it was shown on... PBS, uh, the PBS network in the United States uh, some years ago. It was on the Civil War. You may have seen it. I think I saw some of the episodes. That terrible war. And uh, apparently 50 years after the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, the Union soldiers still surviving and the Confederate soldiers had a reunion there on that site. And uh, they met, they talked about the battle, and uh, then they decided to reenact the battle. And so the Confederate guys got over there where they were 50 years ago, and the Union guys got over there. But instead of swords and bayonets and things, they had crutches and canes. And then they charged. They charged each other as they had done 50 years before. But when they met, they embraced and wept because they realized they weren't enemies and never had been. And that their purpose for being on earth was to look after each other and not attack each other. We have a hard time uh, coming to that realization, um, a lot of, of us, and, and I think it has to do with uh, well, many things, but perhaps the, the sense, the perception of weakness. Nobody wants to be weak. weak. Nobody wants to be vulnerable. And yet, if we're a Christian, as all of you are, as I am, um, the ultimate lesson comes to us from Jesus on the cross when he says, Father, forgive them, for they they know not what they do. Jesus was not weak. In that moment, Jesus was the strongest person on earth. We think that forgiveness makes us weak. Either we must put aside our right to get even, renouncing it completely if we follow Christ, or we must complete, be completely vulnerable before someone we have offended and ask for their forgiveness. So in a sense, yes, forgiveness does make us weak. It is an acknowledgement of our own moral shortcomings if we forgive someone, an acknowledgement of our frail human, uh, our frail human nature. Forgiving and asking forgiveness makes us vulnerable and defenseless, and so it makes us weak. But the crucifix is all about weakness. It's about God making himself vulnerable before us. God absorbing hatred and giving back pure love. And God is not weak. The way I picture heaven is like this. When we get there, when we leave this earth and arrive at that new dimension, we're going to be met by a God who is perfect mercy and love and compassion. 
And that compassion will be directed towards us personally. God knows us inside out. And in the face of that, there will be no more pretense, no more arguing in our own defense, no more complaining about our rights over against others. And there will be a lot of tears. Heaven will be a very wet place. We'll need raincoats and umbrellas, rubber boots, because we will, like those Civil War veterans, finally see ourselves and others as we truly are, recipients of God's constant and endless mercy and channels of that mercy, and recognize that maybe we don't deserve that mercy. Mercy is the image of God, and the merciful are, in fact, a dwelling place for God on earth. As God is merciful to all without distinction, so each of us must radiate that mercy to one another. Who are the ones who are truly celebrated on earth, whose lives have a lasting impact for good? The ones who are victorious in war, regardless of what, you know, militarily, politically, industrially, or the ones who are victorious in mercy. In popular culture, it's the heroes of war. But on a deeper level, it's people like those old Civil War veterans. They are the ones who peel back the veneer, the myth of might makes right, to show us who we truly are, brothers and sisters meant to look after each other. And so, as we watch the news and hear about blockades and invasions and angry confrontations, let's think about Jesus' words in today's gospel, doing what we can to live by them every day, remembering that on Judgment Day, the mercy we have shown others will be returned to us by our Heavenly Father many times over. I invite you now to stand as we renew our profession of faith. Not so much stuff up here. It isn't funny, folks. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, responding to the compassion shown by our merciful God, let us pray we overcome all self-interest as we intercede for the good of the whole church, the needs of our community, and the salvation of all people. For the church, sacrament of God's unconditional love to the world, for the Spirit's guidance and action in the synodal mission of our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For diplomacy that brings reconciliation and peace in the Ukraine and many troubled places in the world, 
for the free flow of humanitarian aid throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who respond with generosity to the needs of the poor and suffering, for human compassion towards victims of famine, disease, and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in need of understanding, forgiveness, and healing, for all who share their time, talent, and treasure with others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the physical and spiritual well-being of all parishioners, for all who have died in Christ recently, including Timothy Kenny, and in memory of Raymond and Lois Allen, and for those who have requested our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers, tender and merciful God, that as you forgive sinners and show kindness even to those who turn from you, grant us the generosity of your spirit to love our enemies and to, forgive, and to give our life and service as to Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. But I wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from this. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom, and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Using the second acclamation, the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis de Sales, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. So now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, time for our annual financial report. Please be seated. Good morning, fellow parishioners. It's a, again a, a great opportunity for our parish leadership to give you an update on our parish finances for 2021, last year, and also as we head into early uh, 22. Uh, we will be dimming the lights shortly. I know this is uh, going to be difficult for those at the back. Some of the slides may not be easy to see. It's like an eye test. But uh, there is a handout today with the bulletin. It's a four-page handout. Uh, so it'll have all of these slides and some of them in more detail. So please make sure you pick up your bulletin uh, as you leave today. First slide, please. And certainly in terms of our revenue categories, um, weekly offerings, uh, we had 209000 uh, 400 some last year and that includes New Year's uh, Easter and Christmas uh, again uh, the the overall total was slightly lower than previous years again some of that was because of the shutdowns uh, through COVID and there were some weather issues as well but overall it was a, a reasonable uh, amount donated through the offerings donations and fundraising we had a little over 32,000 that's individual parishioners making additional donations except separate from the weekly offerings. And it was fundraising efforts. And also we have the uh, retail gift card that we gained profits from as well. Uh, the biggest news last year was the uh, grant, the acquisition of an estate donation uh, of 120,000 was uh, donated last year from the estate of Ann Hamilton. We also, uh, parishioners were able to make direct donations to the St. Vincent de Paul. That was a little, almost 18,000 uh, by getting tax receipts from the parish. And then we were able to transfer that money to St. Vincent de Paul on behalf of those parishioners. Uh, Hanley Hall revenue, very important. As most of you are aware, there's, uh, we, we lease out the total ground floor to the school board and we have uh, small leases for the hall upstairs. So the additional revenues, uh, mainly from the school board, represented 60,000 last year that uh, without having that lease, we wouldn't have. Other revenue streams are things like the votives, uh, liturgical publications, and other smaller items that we do as a parish. Uh, finally, uh, the we did get some uh, additional government uh, grants earlier last year as a result of the COVID pandemic. Uh, we're not receiving those grants anymore, but last year we received up to almost 18,000. So the total operating revenue we received was 485,643. Next slide. So on the operating account, our expenses, uh, we have two staff members and father, we have a payroll and support of 134,603. Um, some of the support includes auto expenses, includes uh, household food expenses as well for father, and, uh, and some other uh, pension benefits as well. Uh, last year, we started the year off with five buildings. We ended up with four. Um, again, Providing any kind of utilities, as you know, is difficult for everyone in terms of your homes. But for these older large buildings, uh, the, as the price goes up, it's been more difficult. Gas for the hall and other facilities, uh, hydro, water, all of that is, and also minor maintenance to keep the buildings in good shape. Parish ministry activities, a lot of that was uh, our charitable. We, we made a lot of charitable donations last year both to individual uh, people in need as well as small organizations. 
and also the music ministry, and uh, we have other ministries as well that were involved. Parish administration, the main thing there would be, uh, aside from the general office expenses, the big items are we, have, uh, we hire a bookkeeper to do our accounting. We also uh, pay uh, taxes, property taxes on the rectory. And uh, we have a fairly large annual insurance bill to cover our buildings and our uh, activities. I mentioned earlier that we do flow through or transfer those donations to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. And finally, we took some of that uh, state money and we transferred it to the building fund. That was 100000 So the total operating expenses were 462000 uh, 302, and that was from our operating account. Next slide, please. In terms of the building fund, maintenance account, um, parishioner donations last year were 75,000, which compared very favorably to uh, the two previous years. Uh, I mentioned already the estate donation, we moved it into the building fund. Uh, we also cleaned out our savings in the archdiocese, our CDF savings. We took 440,000 and moved it into our building fund. So a total of 1,615 was the amount of uh, funds that we had available to support last year's activities. Next slide, please. So on the expenses last year, you were aware we, for over a year now, we've uh, retained uh, engineering consultants who uh, provide technical specifications, engineering drawings. They, did the tendering for us, they awarded the contract, and then they administered the actual demolition contract, and they're continuing to work with us as we do the final stages of the parking lot. Their costs were, last year were uh, 24310 uh, Just recently, uh, prior to Christmas, we did some masonry repairs on the back of the church. Many of you may have seen that uh, going on. That was $12,000. We, uh, you notice the barrels out there, the safety barrels. We bought 300, uh, sorry, 30 of them, and uh, they're to help demarcate the parking lot. Most of it are covered in snow now, but uh, we'll be using those right up until the time that we finish the parking lot, and then we'll uh, try to uh, resell them or, or look after uh, getting them to other organizations. So total expenses, oh, sorry, the last big item, can't miss that one, and as I said at the earlier Mass today, I called it a, a donation by mistake, but it wasn't a, a payment. So we made payments last year uh, totaling 473000 roughly to cover the demolition work that was performed uh, prior to Christmas. Next slide, please. Uh, we also had... Uh, some universal church donations, as you know, in the envelopes. There's separate envelopes. We had eight different opportunities for special donations or collections. Uh, it was challenging, again, with the po COVID restrictions and the lockdown. People weren't always here to make those donations. But overall, the eight uh, different donations totaled 14000 which was about <clears throat> 10 or 15% lower than the previous year. So again, very good uh, donations made in that area. Next slide, please. So just to summarize, uh, in terms of the sacrificial offerings, that's the offertory made weekly and throughout the special seasons, the building fund contributions, the Saint Society of St. Vincent de Paul, donations to the parish, all of that uh, adds up to about 350000 that was coming out of the resources of our parishioners. Just to show you how it compares to previous years. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the 2021 figure is there. Last year was, uh, the year previous to that was 353,000. And you can see the other numbers, 366, 332, and 345. So it compared very well, although there has been inflation over those five years and increased uh, costs that we've all incurred. But considering what we've been through for the last two years, uh, those numbers are very impressive and uh, a lot of credit goes to the parishioners themselves. Next slide, please. Just to remind you on the, the parish giving, there are three key methods or two for sure. 
Uh, one, we have the traditional envelope system, which is you can allocate into two areas, two funds, the offertory or the operational fund or the building fund. We have uh, 295 uh, envelopes issued to families. And on average, uh, again, it's been a tough two years. We're averaging about a little over 70 envelopes each weekend from families. We have a pre-authorized debit program, which is fairly active, and we have uh, almost 40, oh, sorry, 46 families using that method, uh, where it comes off monthly from their uh, checking account. And we find that is, is very good, especially when there's bad weather and, uh, again, lockdowns and other situations. So I encourage people to give consideration to the authorized debit program. You're also able to make, and parishioners do, uh, separate check uh, donations at the parish office or an e-transfer if they so wish. Next slide, please. So as of the 31st of December, which is uh, you know about six weeks ago, we had 94,000 in the operating account and we had building maintenance fund, we had 61,000 roughly. Uh, and as I mentioned already, we transferred all the money out of our uh, savings uh, to these accounts. And so we went into the year in reasonable shape in those two accounts. Next slide, please. Now I'll move quickly to the demolition uh, contract, our major project. You'll recall that the overall contract value started off at just under 600,000. We made a few slight changes, minor things, that added 6,000 to the contract. So the total value was 604,000. <clears> and then the HST was applied. And so 682 was our for final obligation to demolition plus the contractor. The parish payments we made to date did last year came to 574,000. Next slide, please. So as you see, we had to shut down the project and move into another phase over the winter, a winter use of the lot. And uh, then we're going to be finishing the parking lot this spring. We'll be installing three light standards along the center strip. The entire lot will be asphalt uh, paved. We'll be putting topsoil and sod, sod down the, the center strip, which is five meters wide by almost 60 meters long. And under that is a stormwater drainage system leading to Elmsley Street. We'll also be putting some sod and, and soil around the perimeter where uh, we want to make sure that the township strip and our portion of it is, is dressed up to make the lot look presentable over time. We'll be putting concrete curbs at each split space, at the end of each space. Uh, the, obviously the line painting final inspections with Demolition Plus. And then separately, we'll be funding a, a construction of a, a monument to uh, commemorate the existence of St. Francis de Sales School. Next slide. Hmm? Are we? Okay. Well, I can Father's been doing a great job this morning, believe me. <laughs> and so uh, we have about $109,000 in obligations on the contract, and that includes the outstanding GST. So those are the uh, obligations we have going forward to finish the parking lot. We have secured funding. You saw that figure of 60000 in the building fund. Well, we'll probably assign 30000 from that. We're getting, our, this month, we'll be getting our HST rebate from last year, and that's 50000 It's 50% 50 of all the HST we had to spend last year, most of it, again, against the contract. 
And we have the final 50,000 from the estate of Ann Hamilton that we are expecting by March of this year. So that will give us uh, 130,000. And so it's promising that we'll be going into the summer with uh, no parish uh, loans or no parish debt. Next slide. Uh, I've already shown this slide before. This is a conceptual uh, for the uh, monument. It, the design isn't finalized, but we have the bricks put aside from the school, all different eras. We have the metal cross from the front of the school, which we'll downsize. And we have some of the cornerstones that were there and we'll add some new ones to mark the different phases of construction. Next slide. Uh, this is just an overview of the parking lot. There's a better picture in the handout, so you can have a better look at that. Um, we will be making sure the green perimeter is grass and uh, well-groomed. We'll be looking at the center stripe as, as well, where we may place the monument near the entrance to the parking lot. Um, there will be handicap accessible parking well, pretty well where it is now. Parishioners seem to really are drawn to that area as close to the door as possible, which is fine. Um, and we're gonna be able to support at least 75 uh, parking spots. Uh, if we can always crowd in some more if there's major events. And so uh, this drawing is not fully finalized, but we need to finalize it within the next six weeks so we can revise the drawing for line painting and those types of things. So your leadership will still be reviewing this drawing as we go forward. Next slide. So very quickly, uh, a very impressive year of sacrificial giving, it's despite the COVID pandemic conditions. Uh, I can't mention enough how important and wonderful that a donation from the estate of Ann Hamilton, 170,000. Um, mass attendance has been hit hard last year and uh, continues somewhat with the provincial restrictions, concerns of people. Um, we had a very successful demolition of the school. For those of you that got a chance to watch it, uh, essentially there were no incidents, no safety issues, um, no claims, which is good by any of the neighborhood communities or others. And it was on schedule and on budget. Next slide, please. So as we move into this year, it, the importance of uh, sacrificial giving is, is still an important critical revenue source for the parish. Uh, we'll be uh, putting more emphasis on the grocery retail program. I know it's been hard. We haven't been selling them at the back of the church. Hopefully we can resume that this year. Uh, we'd like to do a, a rough mini census this spring, either April or May. Um, we need to know a bit more about our demographic, but um, for those of you that, you know, we're all 12. The last uh, census we did was in 2010. We're all 12 years older for sure. <laughs> So we'll have to see how that turns out. And a big thing for this year is we really hope that we can reopen our parish ministries and allow them to be more active and certainly parish social life. Next slide, please. This is the final slide. Um, I just, on behalf of the parish leadership, uh, we wanna thank uh, all the parishioners for sharing the gifts of, of your treasure, of your time and your talents. Um, giving to the operating fund and the building maintenance fund has, has been a blessing for sure and it's truly appreciated. So I think you as a parish you need to give yourselves a, a, hand, a round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, Bill, for putting that together. It's very thorough and uh, covers a lot of ground, that's for sure. And thank you for your leadership as uh, chair of the Property and Finance Committee during this challenging time when we uh, were confronted with the issue of the school and everything that went with it. So thank you for your, your work. And, and thank you to all the members of the Property and Finance Committee and to you, parishioners, who. Uh, um, we're part of the process, the demolition process from the beginning, and uh, 
Thank you for your financial support of the parish generally over the past year. It's very generous, and uh, your commitment is truly impressive. Please stand now. Final blessing. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated.